like I crashed my sled and we're upside down and pierced through the roof at 120 kilometers an hour. The sleds are very difficult to drive. And that's just the easiest way to put it. They're, they're finicky. They, they have like a personality. You have to, and, and, and you're not so much driving the sled like you would drive a car. You're just trying to guide the sled down the track. But if you misguide it, you'll end up on your head and it can hurt. <laughs> How do you even get to your level? Like, it doesn't seem like something that would be very conducive to like, all right, it's my first time. The beginner stage is wild. In, in Bosley, there's no way to slow the sled down that much. Most times, those, those first couple years, people are crashing a lot and it hurts. And, and it's hard to find people to jump in the back because they're like, ah, screw that. I don't want to get in with you, man. Like, I saw what happened last time. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a really difficult sport to develop in until you get to a point where you're pretty good. And then people actually want to to, to race with you and, and be competitive with you. That's that learning curve. It, it's very difficult. And we see a lot of athletes come into the sport but it's really difficult for athletes to stay in the sport. So when we talk about like driving a bobsled, how do you drive it? I have no idea. Yeah, so inside the sled, like at the very front, that's where I sit, in a way I can see what's going on. I have, uh, they used to have a steering wheel actually, back in the day. Um, yeah, just this little tiny steering wheel, just like in a car, maybe people were driving down the sleds like this, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they found that, 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 you know, if you turn left with a steering wheel and then you needed to turn right, this takes a lot of time to like go from turning left to turning right. And some of the steers we have to do are very, are very quick. Uh, and so they graduated from a steering wheel to two handles just like this. And basically these handles are connected to the front axle of the sled. And if you pull right, the front runner blades will turn to the right and if you pull left they they turn to the left and and then we can be a lot quicker on our steers to go from right to left because they're independent of each other and we don't have to but we're not really like cranking steers so much like you would in a in a car if, if you think like we're going quite fast right so if you're if you're driving down the the highway at 120 kilometers an hour, 100 or on some tracks, 150 kilometers an hour, which is over 90 miles an hour. If you're driving down the highway at those speeds, you're not going to be, you know, making some severe turns, right? So it's all very kind of uh, soft and smooth turns that we're making, and the the secret is more about timing not so much on how much you're steering but on the like the point in which you're steering in the track and so timing is very important more so than the amount that you're steering just for kind of my understanding right like if you didn't steer it at all is this thing just like bouncing off the sides the whole way down yeah it's slot it's sliding off of corners it's hitting the roof it's it's banging the it, it, you're skidding, you're banging walls, you're going to end up on your head somewhere down the track. It just seems like it would really hurt. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun. It's loud, too, when it, when you crash. It's loud and it, and it, hurt, and it hurts. <laughs> what do you do when you crash? You're just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, you hide. And then I've got the cowling in front of me, and so if we crash, I'm just like, you know, the best I can do is go from, from here to to hear <laughs> and it's not very much you know my head's gonna get my head's gonna get hit a couple times and my shoulder's gonna get get burnt maybe a little bit um because there's quite a lot of friction on the on the ice and people get can get severe burns to their skin it's to the point where i've i know people that have had to get skin grafts from other parts of their body because that yes because that burnt the skin off of their of their shoulders but then if you crash, right, as the pilot, do the other three guys, or do they just like, way to go, man? Because it's basically, <laughs> what's, how does that conversation in the bobsled go after? Because it's basically, it's not like the guy in the back is the reason that you crashed. Like, how does that conversation go? Yeah, it's tough. It's, 
it's like, hey, sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> that that was my mistake. You, you know what I mean? Like, um, and typically, you know, at the at the level that we're at, you know, at a, at a Olympic or or world level, you're there because you you trust in your pilot and you believe in in the team and that ability of the team to win medals. And you know, shit happens, right? And sometimes you crash. It's the better you get, the the less you're crashing. You know, in the last ten years, I think I've had five crashes, maybe. Um, and so it doesn't happen very often. The the better you get, and uh, you know, when it when it does happen, uh, you know, I buy the guys some beers later that week to say sorry. And um, but they're but they're also very trusting in me as well, and they're ready to get back in the sled and and, and encouraging me and being like, hey man, it was you know. Don't worry about it. You, you're a great driver. You, you've you've driven this track well before. We won medals here. Let's let's get out there in the race and let's you know let's do our thing. And and most of the time, you know, crashes are just they kind of just sneak up on you. And worst crash. Ooh, yeah, That's I had bad. a really bad crash in uh, ten years ago, in 2012, in on this difficult track in East Germany in Altenburg where I went through the roof of the track, like I crashed my sled and we're upside down and we hit the roof, which is, you know, the roof's there just to keep sleds inside the track. And yeah, we hit it and we actually like pierced through the roof at 120 kilometers an hour. And uh, we kind of got stuck in the, the metal structure of the roof. And it like, it basically like can open the sled and there was a there's a lot of wood up in there and a, a two by four impaled me um and i'm saying this with like a like a smile on my face jokingly and i look at your face and you're like what the like, heck um it definitely was worse than what i'm portraying it to be but i feel like that's the only way i can talk about it without you know getting into the moment too much and yeah it was a yeah. really bad crack um and uh, I was out for for many months, and uh, so were my teammates. And um, typically, that never happens. That that was kind of like one of those freak accidents that happened. But um, yeah, I was yeah, I was impaled. I broke my nose and, and was impaled by a piece of wood um, through my butt and into my back. And made a full recovery though. And um, uh, three of us out of the four in that sled, two years later competed at the olympic games so pretty pumped about that damn yeah Dude, man, what was, was the wild. first run like <laughs> then after like after that were you like holy shit am i gonna do this again i'm sure 10 years yeah, ago like I, you're I sick about talking about it but uh no not particularly but but my first run back i, I did it at a very easy track um with my coach uh, who jumped in the back, and um, it was just the two of us there on Valentine's Day, actually. And, uh, yeah, we ripped down the track, and I was like, oh, it's just like riding a bike, no problems. But definitely for, for years after, I I struggled a lot with, with some anxiety around it and some PTSD and stuff like that. And it was just things I had to overcome with my coaches and support staff. And, and even going back to that track, every time I go back there to race is – there's always some of those feelings there and it's always brought up to, you know, and, um, I do my best to, you know, put those feelings aside until after I'm done, but, uh, you know, inevitably they're going to creep in, but we've had some great results on that track since then. And, and every time I go there, I'm really excited to race there. Um, because generally we do pretty well there now. Uh -huh.